going on? We back at it. Finally got some boxing again. Last week we had the fight with Lomachenko. We're going to see if he's going to fight Devin Haney for Undisputed. Yet to be seen. But today we have Dimitri Bivol facing off against Gilberto Zerdo Ramirez. If you don't know, I'm going to tell you right now. Zerdo, he's the real deal. Moving up recently to light heavyweight. He's 44-0. He's been a beast down at 168 for a hot minute. And now he's finally moving up for bigger fights. And Dimitri Bivol, come on now. We just seen him get the win over Canelo Alvarez in his last fight. I've known about him since 2017, 2018. I was not surprised. I did the video on it. I thought it was a 50-50 fight, but I said, don't sleep on Dimitri Bivol. If you're sleeping on him, you're out of your fucking minds. And he came out, and not only did he win, he won convincingly. So now you have him on the radar of a lot of Mexican boxing fans as he faces off against another big champion, this time undefeated. So let's look at the matchup here. Dimitri Bivol, 20-0 now, 6 foot tall, has a 72-inch reach, 31 years old, fights orthodox. Facing off against Zerto Ramirez, 44-0, 31 years old, southpaw, stands at 6 two and a half inches with a 75 inch reach and let's look at the the resumes for both of these guys so in the last six fights Bivol has obviously fought Canelo Alvarez back in May 7th 2022 to that unanimous unanimous decision that he's fought Umar Salamov, Craig Richards, Gilbert uh, Rivera and then the ones that really stand out are Joe Smith Jr three years ago in March of 2019, and then Jerome Pascal, um, the winner prior to that in 2018. So, and I think he fought, he might have fought Pascal twice, I can't remember, but Pascal, Joe Smith Jr., and Canelo Alvarez in his last six fights, that's a really, really good lineup right there. Joe Smith Jr. having an extremely good power at light heavyweight, and Jerome Pascal having very, very good power Extremely athletic at light heavyweight. And then Canelo Alvarez, who, as I've mentioned many times, he brings in that experience, that know-how, that sharpness, that championship pedigree, and he's a naturally heavy guy. He he weighed in at 174.3 for the fight, but when he rehydrated, he probably was, he might have had five pounds on Dimitri Bivol, but Dimitri Bivol is a full-fledged lightweight with a Shotgun jab from hell, really good one-two, great leg movement, really, really good defense. It's just an all-around great fighter. And then you look at Zerto Ramirez. Most of his, his fights were at 168. He was champion down there for a long time. So his fights, recently he had his fight with Jesse Hart in 2018. He had, back to, he had two fights with Jesse Hart, and those were wars. Then he had to fight with Sullivan Barrera who moved up to 175, and he beat Barrera by knockout in 2021. Then he beat Uneski Gonzalez in 2021 in that winter, December 18th, by TKO stoppage. And then he just finished beating Dominic Bosol from uh, Deutschland in May of this year by knockout, by stoppage. So I was just looking at highlights from that fight, and that was the 175 eliminator bout to face off against the WBA champion, which is Dimitri Bivol at 175. And last fight against Bosso, okay guy. He was ranked higher than Ramirez, but from the looks of it, it was clear early on that he was a smaller guy, yes, but he did not have the technical skill and know-how to deal with the constant pressure of a southpaw like Zerto, who is bigger than him, with better activity than him, better combination thrower, a higher boxing IQ. It, he just looked like he was overmatched, and it showed. He got stopped pretty early in that fight. I think it was the fourth round. Right before the stoppage, the ref came to the corner and said, if I see another round like the one I just saw, I had to stop it. And I didn't see where he was going to really change anything moving forward, and he kept going to the body and eventually got the knockdown, and that's where the ref stopped it. So that's what both guys look like in their past six fights. However, in my opinion, Dimitri Bivol has clearly had the higher level of competition in the past four years, and especially recently in the past uh, five to six months than Zerto has had either at 168 or recently when he's been up at 175. 
So let's go ahead and look at the tale of what they both bring in terms of speed, footwork, power, boxing IQ, ring generalship, so on and so forth. So we'll go ahead and start out with speed. And I think the speed advantage is going to go clearly to Dimitri Bivol. Gilberto Ramirez, he's going to be a very big guy. I mean, he comes into these fights. I mean, the last fight against Boso, he weighed in under the 175 weight limit. But at fight night, he had already rehydrated to, I believe, 204 pounds. So he, he shot up the cruiserweight overnight. So you know exactly what he's going to bring there. But speed-wise, he's not bad. He's not bad. He has decent speed, but he is going to be outmatched against Bivol in terms of speed here. So speed goes to Bivol. Now we're going to go ahead to power. In terms of power, I give that to Zerto. Zerto, he's, I think he's a natural light heavyweight. I, I think he just is. That's where he probably should have been this whole time. And kudos to him for being able to make weight at 168 and dominate the, that division. But I think he's a natural 175 pounder, not a natural cruiserweight. So I think he's going to go in there, carry that power up. He, he, he's already shown that he still has that. Now, Dimitri Bivol has solid power. Don't get it messed up. And we saw that on display against Canelo. Because I don't think Canelo ever felt that type of power from a guy who he was bigger than. Even against Sergey Kovalev. And granted, Kovalev was faded at that point. But I don't think at any point he was really concerned with the power. Even, when, even in the few moments where Kovalev let his hands go... And landed a shot or two. I don't think it ever really bothered Canelo Alvarez. Whereas Bivol, he would land pitter patter shots here, break the guard with the jab, and then he would put a little oomph into the jab here and there. And you can t you can look at Canelo's face and say, "Ah, this is different." He shook it off once or twice early in the fight, but as the fight went on, he didn't like the feeling of that jab and the two when it landed at times. So I think that he has very good power, but I'm going to go with Zerto here. Bigger guy, bring, packs that punch with the the um, thumb up uppercut as well as the hooks to the body from the southpaw stance. I'm going with Zerto for the power. Now in terms of footwork, I think this is going to be Dimitri Bivol. He has some of the best footwork, not just in the lightweight, light heavyweight division, but in all of boxing. He he really uses his legs well, really uses angles well, moves around the ring, just all around very great. Zerto doesn't have the footwork that B-Wall have has, but he has better footwork than Canelo has. Ironically, being a bigger guy who isn't as technically as sound as Canelo, he has better footwork than Canelo. His feet aren't in cement. He can move around, cut the ring off, follow you, and move out of danger as well. However, Bivol, the advantage for footwork goes to him. Now we're going to move on to boxing IQ. Now here is where I think the difference is going to be. Gilberto Ramirez, a pressure fighter, those volume, punches and bunches, really sets up his uppercuts and his hooks off his jab very, very, very well. I really love what he does with that. And in particular, his up. Up uppercut, if that makes sense. He throws, at times, he'll throw that uppercut with his fist oriented vertically as opposed to horizontally. You know, vertically with his thumb up. And he did that against Boso. And what that's good at doing is he's able to time it and be able to split, especially guys that like to hide behind a high guard. So at times, you'll see B-Ball with the high guard a lot. And that that's a tool that Zerto can use throw that jab or feint it at times, and then come up off that feint with the vertical jab or the vertical uppercut to split that guard and really try to do damage, score some points, and then come back downstairs, bang, right hook to the body, double up on the hook to the body, bang, bang, and then come back with the jab, up jab, bang, back up top. So I, I think that that is going to be something that Zerto is going to have in his back pocket to be able to use against Bivol. However, Bivol, one of the best technically sound fighters I've seen in a very long time. And like I said, it dates back to the earlier days in 2017 when him and Better Biev and Shabransky were really the up-and-coming young lions in that weight division. 
and this guy, Mr. Fundamentals, we saw that, again, I'm going to go back to the Alvarez fight. We saw that with Canelo. Canelo could not break through that guard. Canelo was not ready for the unorthodox 1-2. You let B-Ball get into a rhythm, and he starts peppering you with that jab. Throw one light, throw one medium, throw one light, and then boom, throw that shotgun jab. Like, you don't know when the, the power is going to change up. And he's throwing it with varying levels of speed as well. And he's moving his head and he's stepping off the center line. And he's coming back with that too behind it. I'm telling you, man, that ring IQ is those Eastern block fighters are different, bro. I'm telling you. Bivol, Lomachenko, Triple G, Usyk, them Eastern block fighters, they're different, bro. Like, believe me when I tell you. And if you don't believe me, just look at the tape. It's painfully obvious that these guys have a different level of ring IQ. It doesn't make it better or worse than some of the top in the other countries, but it's different. And B-Ball has seen the creme de la creme. And Alvarez, I mean, he just saw Alvarez, right? And Joe Smith Jr., I would say, is a poor man's orthodox version of Gilberto Ramirez. Staying in front of you, not as active, but with that awkward jab and coming with those awkward hooks with that power. Whereas Zerto, who has he really seen? Besides Jesse Hart, who's okay. But, I mean, you went through two wars with the average level fighter in Jesse Hart. And then you knocked out a faded 39-year-old Sullivan Barrera. It's not the Sullivan Barrera of old that we knew who was really this unorthodox, really funky kind of Cuban fighter. He wasn't that guy then. And then Dominic Boso, I mean, he's all right. He's a guy, but he wasn't really going to bring you anything that was, that was going to concern you. So I'm going to have to give the edge to Ring IQ to Dimitri Bivol. Even though I think Zerto's a very, very smart, technically sound fighter, Bivol, I think the Ring IQ is going to shine through in this fight. Then we're going to move on to defense here. And defense, again, I'm going to have to give to Dimitri Bivol. Dimitri Bivol, tight defense, very technically sound, very defensively responsible, knows how to change the angles, get out of danger, won't let you cut the ring off on him. Zerto, solid defense. He His defense is his offense, but he doesn't move his head as much as I would like, and he does not move his head much in between his shots either. He doesn't step off the center line, change angles to get out of danger either. And I think that is something that will be become a problem for him in a fight against a guy like Bivol. It's not a problem against a guy like Jesse Hart and you got, got away with it. It's not a problem against Solo Barrera who's faded and kind of tentative trying to throw shots at you because he doesn't like what's coming back or a guy like Bosel. You're going to have problems against... Dimitri Bivol, if you don't move your head more than you have in your past. And after 44 fights, you kind of got to think this is who you are. So I think that could become a problem as this fight goes on into the later rounds, if we get there. Because remember, boxing, one punch, anything can happen. We get that. But you go to rounds five, six, seven, those defensive deficiencies are really going to start to show up if you haven't cleaned up those bad habits. So defense is going to go to Bivol. And then X Factor, I'm going to give, actually it's a push for me. Because I think Zerto has that one punch stopping power, especially if he gets you to the body. If he starts doubling up on that hook to the body, and then he starts hitting you with that left hook too, it could be problems for you. And then he hits you with that, that lead right hook upstairs, it could be problems with you for you. If you have that high guard up all the time and you don't see it coming. However, Dimitri Bivol, he he just he does just enough to win. But if you kick up the intensity on him, he's going to match that and try to uh, surpass that, like he did with Canelo. Canelo tried to sit on his shots. He tried to smother him, and Bivol said, "Nah." And then when he had Canelo kind of flustered, instead of charging in and wasting energy and allowing Canelo to lean back, get his, his breath back and encounter with shots. No, he said, no, no, no. You, you're going to sit there and um, admire me as I and, I and and that exchange that I just won. And then we're going to reset and then I'm going to come after that ass again. Pause. Like he, he just, he knows how 
to respond in the moment. Does not get flustered. He's like a machine. So I think it's a push for me because they're both undefeated. They don't know how to lose either one of them. And I think this is going to be one of Bivol's toughest fights. And if he's looking forward to fighting better Biev, this is going to be a great uh, simulation for him as to what it might be like. Because this guy is going to walk forward. Zerto will not stop. He's a machine too. He will not stop. You're going to really have to put him down. That, that is, it is what it is. All right. So X Factor is a push. So overall, I would have to say that I would have to pick Dimitri Bivol to win this fight by decision. I don't think it will be unanimous decision. I think it'll be majority decision. Um, that's that's just my thoughts on it. I think majority decision for Bivol. I think that he's overall the better fighter. And though Zerto will push him hard, I think that Bivol's experience and technical abilities are going to show up over the course of the fight and are going to separate him from Zerto. However, I, I am very excited about this fight and I think it's going to be one that you can't miss. So tune into the zone. It's going to be about 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time when I post this video up. So check out the video. Uh, the main event card should be happening at 4.30. And then the main event, maybe it might be 5.30 or 6. Because I think you have three or four fights before the main event with Bivol and Ramirez. So I'm guessing 6 o'clock Eastern Standard Time should be when the fight comes on. So, hey, I'm looking forward to it. Let me know, know what you think. Leave your comments below. Do you agree, disagree? Do you think I'm out of my, my mind? Do you think I'm on point? Uh, let me know, and um, I'll be dropping a video for Game 6 of the World Series as well today. Phillies versus the Astros, big matchup with Valdez, Framber Valdez versus Zach Wheeler again in their rematch from Game 2, and I'll give you my thoughts on that. That's going to be a very interesting video, trust me. I got some very, very interesting thoughts on that one. So until next time, enjoy the fights, and see you on the next episode. Peace.